Hey there guys, Mike here. Mike's DVDs and Blu-rays collection is back with another episode for you. Today guys, we're going to show you some new releases that I've picked up over the past few months and um, had it in my to watch pile, which is a huge pile, it seems like. And uh, it takes time to kind of watch them all. So uh, some of these may be new to me, uh, but they've been out for a few months or so. But let's get right to it. Uh, this was a, uh, a movie I picked up, uh, found it on eBay, and it's an ex-library uh, copy. So it's got, you know, this is from the T-Guard Public Library, which I don't mind getting these. I mean, if I can get it at an economical price to see the movie. Now, if it was a collector's edition or special edition box set of some sort, then I would get that. But especially with newer movies, because it's kind of hit or miss um, if the movies are that good. You know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of the equivalent of renting, a, say, a red box movie and you spend like two, three dollars. So if you can get it cheap, then hey. Uh, so this was a movie. I'm not sure where I heard of this movie. I think I was reading articles or just different stuff. But this was a very good movie. Um, it's released through Lionsgate, and I watched it in February. Uh, this is The Last Black Man in San Francisco. Um, really uh, interesting movie. Very very well made, very well acted. Uh, it basically tells the tale of um, two friends. I'm not sure if they're brothers. I think they're, I think they're friends. And um, it kind of centers around this house in san francisco uh one of the guys is really interested in architecture and everything and he's wanting to save this house uh an older man that they know i think maybe it's a grandfather I, i'm sorry i can't get all the details but he basically lives there and he's elderly and he's going to lose the home eventually and da 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 but it's very interesting because it shows off a lot of stuff from san francisco the the uh, great architecture, the homes that are featured in uh, in that area, in that city. And it's really cool um, and uh, really recommended. And it's, you know, it's very, very well made. Um, it's directed by a guy named Joe Talbot. And uh, it stars James Falls and Jonathan Majors. And it's got Danny Glover in it. He plays the older man. So I highly recommend that, guys. Check that out. Maybe a night when you're wanting something new, but you haven't seen it. It looks interesting. There you go. But anyways, here's another one. I uh, picked this up, God, some months ago. I, I, I may have even got this last year. Um, this was a uh, movie by Edgar Wright. Um, I'm not sure if it's the follow-up to... Um, uh, the, the, the car movie with the kid, what was that? Uh, God, I can't think of the name of it. But anyways, this is his follow-up to that movie. Oh, Baby Driver is what I'm thinking of. Uh, this is Last Night in Soho. And, uh, it's kind of, it's got a little flavor of a neo-noir-ish. It's got the, the city, uh, the neon and different stuff, you know. Uh, it stars, um... Anna Taylor Joy, and she kind of does a double role. She kind of plays this one character, and she has these fantasies, um, and then she's this other character, kind of like her alter ego of sorts. And uh, it's pretty interesting, and um, it's definitely a movie to kind of check out. Um, to check out to watch, you know more and more i mean it's it kind of it kind of crisscrosses time frames like the 1960s and it includes the fashion world and different stuff like that so it's really interesting a really good tour de force by anna taylor joy in it next up this was a real surprise uh movie by uh, michael bay uh got i mean i seen the preview at the, the movie theater and it looked great, but but then again, I thought, well, they show all the best scenes in some action movies at in the trailer, and then when you watch it, it's not that great. But we uh, we picked this up. Uh, this is Ambulance, and um, it stars Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, Yala Abdul Mateen II, and Isa Gonzalez. 
and a uh, great little cast. Um, and uh, Jake Gyllenhaal really another kind of tour de force in his performance. He starts out all calm and cool and knows what he's doing. And then as they uh, take place in this bank heist, he kind of falls apart. His character kind of falls apart. He kind of changes tones real quick like maybe from good to mean you know bad to good or whatever uh, but really good michael bay i mean it's directed takes place in los angeles um basically they come up with this bank heist uh they need a driver which is uh, uh yah abdul mateen the second which i probably tore his name up uh so he's driving the vehicle jake gillenhall is the mastermind behind it and uh, they end up getting the things kind of fall apart at the last minute of the bank robbery. And uh, they basically sneak into an ambulance to, to get away because the place is surrounded by cops and fire department and ambulances and everything. So they take they take off in that ambulance and it's a great cover for them for a while. And um, Isaac Gonzalez is one of the drivers of the ambulance. And they basically commandeer it and just, there you go. And, and, and then in, in inevitable Michael Bay style, it is nonstop, boom, boom, boom. Great, great movie. I'm, I'm, it's, it's one of the first Michael Bay movies I've seen in a long time that I've really enjoyed. Um, I, was, I was a fan of the, like, the first two Transformers when they came out. I mean, especially when my... My kids were younger when they were like seven or eight. They they loved that kind of stuff. But then I kind of dropped off with some of the other sequels where it just turns into this unmemorable CGI mess, you know, and stuff. So this was back to basics. Uh, of course, it's got some practical effects and CGI and stuff in it, but it's really, really good. Action-packed. I definitely should check that out. You know, this is a movie with one of my favorite actors of all time. This was a movie, it took me many, many years to finally see this. So I finally picked up 1973's Serpico. Now here it's coming out on a different, I think there's a different release of this, a newer one. Uh, oh, excuse me. But um, Al Pacino stars in Serpico. He's kind of a by-the-book undercover cop and um, really cool. Um, so he's directed by Sidney Lumet. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's really good. It takes place in New York and everything. So it's one of those really good 1970s movies, uh, 1973. It's probably not the best Al Pacino performance ever, but, uh, very good. Nonetheless, uh, Serpico. And, uh, here's another movie that I, I must say, I, I have never owned it on, uh, any physical media unless I had it on, um, I may have had it on VHS, which I don't have anymore, uh, or, or a copy of this. So I had to pick this up. There's a lot of talk. It's definitely from my generation, you know, when I was like 18, 17, 18, this came out, 16. You know, it's one of those movies and stuff. The soundtrack, just that time in history, you know, grunge music, everything was kind of meh, you know. Uh, so it, it kind of fits in with that whole time period. This is The Crow starring the late Brandon Lee. And uh, this is just your basic Miramax uh, Blu-ray. Uh, it's got some, I think it has a, yeah, it has some extras on it and stuff. I mean, it's tragic what happened to Brandon Lee in this movie where he, he got killed accidentally by a uh, loaded prop gun, or, you know, it was a real gun, but it wasn't supposed to be loaded with real uh, ammunition, which is kind of similar to what's happened recently with the uh, on the set of the movie Rust with Alex uh, Baldwin or Alec Baldwin. Uh, so it's similar, uh, but very infamous and everything. And uh, it's just kind of a bittersweet movie and stuff. But I mean, it's not the best movie ever made, and it's not you know, but it's definitely one of those movies you want to pop in every so often, and it it really. It really hits it hits the mark. Now this next movie, uh, Nicolas Cage, God bless his heart. He's he's done so many movies, and so many of them have come out direct to video, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But he is still one of the best actors of his generation for sure. Uh, I picked up this this movie. There's still another Nicolas Cage movie that 
I haven't watched yet. Um, it's one of his newer ones, but this was one, and me and my wife watched it one night, and uh, I have to say, it, it it either went over my head, or I did, or I needed to take some LSD or something. But the movie seems like an LSD trip of the worst kind. Um, maybe I'm missing something about this. I'm not sure. Maybe I need to rewatch it. One of my sons said it was great, so it's like. So the movie I'm talking about is Mandy. And uh, I have to say, visually stunning, visually stunning, well-directed characters and stuff. But some of it is just so bizarre that you can't quite connect to the actors, the main actors. You know, Nicolas Cage and his wife, um, I believe it is his wife, yeah. And... Um, but yeah, it's just kind of bizarre. It's way out there. It's like David Lynch would even say it's bizarre. But maybe I just need to rewatch it. But it it's it's really cool in a way too. It's hard to describe this movie. It really is. It's kind of like what I would say is I wouldn't recommend it per se. Maybe give it a try. Maybe rent it. Find it somehow and watch it and give it a try. It's probably on Netflix more than likely. Uh, but yeah, Mandy. Very interesting. Now, now, it is very interesting, I have to say, and it's, it's mind-blowingly the look of the movie. It's just mind-blowing. I mean, it's so cool. Uh, just some of the characters suffer. Maybe it's the script. Maybe it's not. Anyways, here's a movie I picked up. God, I, I don't know when I picked this up. Uh, finally got to kind of watch it. Uh, this is uh, Snake Eyes. I may have shown this when I first got it, but I hadn't watched it yet. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, the, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of G.I. Joe, as you can see. Um, but as far as the newer movies they've made, they've been really hit and miss uh, as far as with the fans. You know, the fans that grew up with the toys, the cartoon, the comic books like me. Um, kind of hit or miss. It probably really didn't answer are questions of who snake eyes is where does he come from and everything and everything but yeah it's it's okay it's pretty good i guess just like the other ones you know didn't blow me away or i didn't want to watch it again just immediately or anything so snake eyes uh it's part of the gi joe origin story of snake eyes the character next up this was a movie uh, man, I probably have had this well over a year. Um, I just finally getting around to watching it and, and showing it now on video. Uh, it's a movie I've seen uh, many times, actually. It's directed by, written and directed by John Sayles, uh, Eight Men Out. Uh, great, great movie. It, it tells the story of the scandal of the, um, let me get the facts here, the uh, 1919 World Series. Uh, with the Chicago White Sox, uh, the scandal where they uh, they they were gonna basically take some dives, you know, throw throw off some pitches, uh, try not let the other team win. So basically, if they throw the game, X number of players and other assorted characters will benefit from betting on this and everything and stuff. So it's it's fascinating. It's a fascinating history in sports. In sports history, it really is. It's a fascinating story. Uh, Eight Men Out. Now, that is a highly recommended thing. Now, that has um, Charlie Sheen in it. Now, Charlie Sheen's in this, too. Now, I got this off the shelf recently and watched it because I just I wanted to watch it. So, I thought I would talk about it. And um, I really, really enjoyed it more this time than I've seen it in the past for some reason. I guess it was just what I was looking for that night. Uh, but the movie uh, Platoon, 1986, Oliver Stone's big, big, big hit. Uh, great cast of characters. William Defoe is really good in this. And Charlie Sheen as the new private shipped over to uh, Vietnam, kind of. Kind of like uh, Born on the Fourth of July, where they come over there, they're all ready to go, and their belief systems are sh are shaped, are are shaped, are shook to the to their core, and they, it changes them. Uh, so by the end of the movie, they're this different person. You know, they've had to grow up quick. Uh, but yeah, Platoon. Um, I mean, it's a modern day classic, classic of my generation. And um, I've shown this on um, Walter Hill. 
recommendation video. Uh, finally got to sit down and watch this on 4K uh, while I was healing from foot surgery. And uh, I was blown away by this. It has a, a great soundtrack. The sound is really good on this. And the uh, picture quality is great. Uh, Streets of Fire. This is the new 4K from Shout Select. Uh, really good movie. Really good. It's got a lot of music in it. My wife watched some of it. She's like, is this a musical? And I'm kind of like, eh, it's not really a musical per se, but it, it, it heavily uses rock. It's kind of like a 1950s movie stuck in 1984 with everything. And it takes place during that time frame, but it could be any, any time really. Uh, it's really cool how it's all kind of blended together and everything. So there you go. Streets of Fire. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, there was just some newer movies. I mean, yeah, Platoon's not a new movie, but some newer releases to me. Uh, some stuff I've recently watched um, and everything. So if you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Give me some feedback in the comment section. would be awesome. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, until next time, guys, I'm Mike. And as always, take care, take it easy, and watch good movies.